for joining us as we turn the pages of today's magazine. It is filled with important facts on timely observations. First up, we go behind the screen of the television as we commemorate World Day for Audiovisual Heritage. The center spread features the hardworking men and women of the Jamaica Fire Brigade as Fire Safety Week closes. I'm Audrey Williams, your guide with the information you need to improve your life. Stay with us. Jamaica comes alive for Jamaica 55. The Jamaica Information Service is inviting primary, secondary, and tertiary students to catch the vibes and join in the celebration by participating in this year's staging of the JIS Heritage Competition. Primary and prep school children, ages 9 to 12, enter the essay competition and tell us how you would want to see Jamaica in 55 years. High schoolers, enter the poster competition. Show us your artistic interpretations of Jamaica throughout her 55 years in a poster titled Jamaica 55. Posters may be designed digitally or illustrated. Zoom, click, snap. Yes, tertiary students, the photo competition is back. Capture an image that best represents Jamaica 55. For more information on the competition rules and how to submit entries, visit the JIS website at www.jis.gov.jm. You may also send an email to heritageessay at jis.gov.jm, heritageposter at jis.gov.jm, or heritagephoto at jis.gov.jm, or call us at 926-3590-4. The deadline for all entries is October 31, 2017. So ready, set, go for prizes galore. JIS Heritage Competition 2017, celebrating Jamaica 55. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, October 27. Jamaica's first net zero energy building has officially opened at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. The building houses the Caribbean's first Center for Advanced Research in Renewable Energy, CARE, which promotes research in solar, wind, and biomass energy. The Net Zero building will demonstrate emerging and best practices in the built environment as it relates to energy efficiency, renewable energy, and environmental design. Speaking at the opening ceremony on Wednesday, Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley says the facility was significant as research showed that buildings account for over a third of the world's energy use and associated greenhouse gas emissions. In tropical and subtropical regions, the main demands are generated by air conditioning, lighting, water heating and appliances. And so it is therefore important for us to focus a lot more on making our buildings more efficient so that they are easy and cheaper to heat, cool, light, ventilate. One of the principal investors in the project, Professor Tara Dasgupta, says the building will save approximately 50,000 kilowatts of energy, which translates to a reduction in carbon dioxide emission of 34.5 metric tons per year. A shotgun has been recovered by the Joint Security Forces in the Denham Town Zone of Special Operations. Zoso Communications' official Twitter account reports that the shotgun was found at the intersection of Chestnut and Tulip Lane. Thursday's find is among a number of contraband and illegal activities stemmed since the zone was declared on October 17. On October 19, 34 live rounds of ammunition were found. The following day, a man was arrested for providing false identification in an attempt to breach a security checkpoint. A credit card scamming machine reportedly used in lottery scamming and other fraudulent activities was recovered on October 21. And on October 22, a 9mm magazine and a rifle cleaning kit were found on Pink Lane in the Denham Town, Zoso. Jamaica is hoping to improve its resilience to natural disasters and education of disaster risk reduction in homes and communities with the implementation of fire wardens clubs in schools across the country. The official launch of the clubs was held yesterday at the Greater Portmore Primary School in St. Catherine. Deputy Superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, James Lee, says the Fire Wardens Clubs represent a far-reaching initiative that seeks to engage and empower students and their parents about fire safety. We are expecting other schools to come on board so that this initiative can be, can be spread across the island. So we will have fire wardens in all the schools and there I'm sure that from these wardens we'll have prospective 
firefighters. The fire wardens' clubs seek to educate children with the right knowledge, skills and attitudes to prepare for, respond to and recover from disasters. The children will engage in discussions on topics such as natural hazards and disasters, rescue techniques, basic first aid, volunteerism, fire brigade knowledge and foot drills. The launch of the clubs was part of activities in observance of Fire Safety Awareness Week, which ends on Saturday. More residents of Central Jamaica, particularly students, are now more aware about the justice system and the work of the court, as a public education day was hosted in Mandeville. The Expo was the sixth in a series of public education days conducted across the island by the Judiciary of Jamaica. President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Dennis Morrison, says the initiative is being implemented with the hope that participants will garner a better understanding of the value of the court as a critical institution. It's our responsibility as a society to ensure that our legal institutions are respected and treated with, with all the the, the deference that they deserve, not for their own sake, but because they are important symbols of what we say we stand for. The Public Education Day consisted of a tour of the courthouse, as well as the Expo, which had 24 agencies on showcase. And finally, the Meteorological Service of Jamaica continues to monitor the unstable weather condition currently affecting the island. Earlier today, the Met Service extended a flash flood watch for low-lying and flood-prone areas of all parishes. A stationary front hovering over the country is expected to linger west of Jamaica today before dissipating early on Saturday. A ridge of high pressure is expected to briefly become the significant feature on Saturday. Residents are warned to exercise caution throughout the weekend as the forecast for tomorrow now shows isolated afternoon showers and thunderstorms across sections of central and western parishes. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. It's the JIS Heritage Posters and Publications Sale. Come and get your posters and publications from now until October 30 at low, low prices. Packages include books, posters, brochures, Jamaican flags, and more. And if you spend over $1,500, you'll get a prize. For more information, contact the Jamaica Information Services Research and Publications Department by calling 926-3590-4 or 926-3740-6 or visit them at 58A Halfway Tree Road, Kingston 10. You may also contact our Montego Bay Regional Office by calling 952-6604 or visit them at the NHT Building, 42B to C, Union Street, Montego Bay. Run, come before them done. Posters and publications available while stocks last. World Day for Audiovisual Heritage seeks to raise general awareness of the need to preserve and safeguard important materials of this nature for future generations. The first and most popular medium for viewing audiovisual material is... The television coming up frame by frame of television operation welcome to where it's at In the late 1800s, a 23-year-old German student, Paul Nipkow, succeeded in sending images to wires with the help of a rotating disc. He had invented the first ever mechanical module of television using a technology called the electric telescope. Other inventors after him perfected the craft by using the cathode ray tube and mechanical scanner system to create a new television system. And so, what was once a manually operated machine that only gave black and white pictures is now a more sophisticated, modern electronic machine operated by the press of a button. The television creates moving pictures by repeatedly capturing still pictures and presenting these frames to our eyes so quickly that they seem to be moving. The TV set receives these pictures along with sound as electronic signals sent from broadcast houses or TV stations as we call them. The signals go through the tuner or antenna socket. Now in the TV you have the demodulator circuit. That now separates the video from the audio. The video information is sent to the CRT while the audio is sent to the audio processor 
in order for us to get sound. The CRT, or cathode ray tube, is often referred to as the picture tube, and elements inside it begin to reconstruct the pictures almost immediately. From this point, the picture signal goes to the electron gun circuit, which splits the video into separate red, blue, and green beams to drive the three electron guns. Attached to the gun, the all-important flyback. This flyback supplies the high voltage. Now, this high voltage is used to light up the CRT. And once the CRT comes alive, it emits the red, blue, and green electron beams which will scan the pictures. The scanning is done from right to left all the way to the bottom of the TV screen and restarts at the top. The colored beams pass through a grid of holes called a shadow mask, which directs them so they hit exact places on the screen. Now, you also need the horizontal yoke. Now, this yoke is what is used to direct the beams so that each beam is focused to that particular pixel. So that all the beams enter the shadow mass through one hole. Right? That way we can get a true white picture. We also have the magnet here, which is used to align the beam so that they are perfect, spot on. Inside these tiny holes are phosphor-coated color dots which when they're hit by the beams, quickly build up a colored picture, while elsewhere on the screen remains dark. Spots of light are also produced on the screen by the transfer of the CRT beam energy to the phosphor. That is what allows us to see the light. The ultraviolet ray is really invisible to the human eye. So the phosphor, phosphor is what creates that bright light so you can actually see the picture. So what we see on our screen is the combined effect of all the electron light emissions. Everything happens so fast that it almost seems instant, but the reality is that the electron beams actually scan a pixel mask of 525 lines 30 times per second. This is what creates the illusion of moving pictures. While all this is happening, audio information from the incoming signal passes through a separate audio circuit, which drives it to the loudspeakers so they can recreate the sound exactly in time with the moving picture. So in a nutshell, the signal from a broadcast house goes to your TV tuner or antenna socket, then to the signal processor which separates the audio from the video. The video signal is then fed to the cathode ray tube while the audio signal enters a separate circuit and both go through a quick but complex process to produce picture and sound. Voila. Pleasant viewing. There's a concert. Today come along, there's a concert here today. So take your seat and pose your best. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Give yourself a fighting chance. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. All October is being observed as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let's not waste a day of that observation. Some of you may be showing your support by wearing pink during the month, while others have heeded the urge to get tested. Here's some encouragement for those of you who are struggling with the diagnosis. On June 25, 2012, Jamaican sprinter Novlene Williams-Mills was diagnosed with breast cancer. In that same year, she finished fifth in the 400 meters at the London Olympics and won a bronze medal in the 4x400 meter relays. She was brave enough to do a double mastectomy, removing both her breasts to lessen her chances of getting the disease again. In recent times, Williams Mills is bravely speaking out to stress that early detection is what saved her life and to educate people that breast cancer is no respecter of age, fitness or talent. More important, 
She wants people to know breast cancer can be beaten. We salute Navlene Williams Mills and all our breast cancer survivors. Keep fighting. Jamaica's beauty is our duty. Prevent bushfires during the windy, dry season. Remove firewood, dried grass, or bush away from your house. Never use fires to clear land. Never light a fire in an open area when it's windy. Ensure cigarette butts, matches, or other lighting materials are out before disposal. And use an ashtray. Don't throw cigarette butts out of your window. High winds and dry conditions can be a fiery combination. Lend a hand. Protect our land from fires. Empowering our people for a fire-safe Jamaica. That's the theme for Fire Safety Awareness Week. The observation culminates tomorrow, but that won't mark the end of the Jamaica Fire Brigade's work to spread a culture of safety in the home, at school, and the workplace. We now go inside the operations of the brigade. To duty God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it's too late, or save an older person from the horror of the day. Enable me to be alert, to hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. And if a foreign tear away, I am called home to thee. Guide my spouse and children, Lord, and their protector be. Amen. <laughs> When the going gets tough, well, the tough just get going. You could say the men and women of the Jamaica Fire Brigade are often in deep waters and face fiery situations daily. However, as heroes go, they find courage in their fears. The Jamaica Fire Brigade is a statutory body in the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. Its central administration is headed by a board of directors, which sets broad policy guidelines implemented by a commissioner in whom is vested the operational command and day-to-day -day running of the brigade. At the Jamaica Fire Brigade, we not only respond to fires and other emergencies, but there are a myriad of other things that we do. We get involved in community work as well. We make sure that we go from a fire prevention perspective and educate persons as to how to prevent fires. So, for example, we go into schools, we go into workplaces, we go into communities, and we create community resilience programs along with other agencies like the ODPM. So in essence, we are making sure that we prevent fires rather than fight. And there's more. The brigade is also charged with obtaining information with regards to potential risks from fire or other disasters, inspecting buildings to ensure that reasonable steps are taken for the prevention of fire and for protection against the dangers of fire or other disasters, and making arrangements to ensure that reasonable steps are taken to prevent or mitigate loss or injury arising from a fire or other disasters. The brigade is broadly divided into two sections, operations and administration, each headed by a deputy commissioner. The deputy commissioner in charge of operations sees to the day-to-day -day operations of the fire brigade, which involves the persons who go out on the fire trucks, the emergency medical technicians. These are the persons that we call paramedics that go out on the ambulance. You know, they deal with every medical emergency that you can think about. He also is in charge of the fire prevention unit. Also, he has overall responsibility for the four areas which focus on firefighting and rescue operations island-wide. Headed by assistant commissioners, these areas are drawn up along geographic lines and are further subdivided into 13 divisions which conform to parish boundaries. There are over 30 fire stations spread island-wide throughout the divisions. These are served by a fleet of approximately 90 firefighting and rescue vehicles and 58 utility vehicles. The Deputy Commissioner now who is in charge of administration, 
This is the area where the welfare of the fire brigade is actually taken care of. The budgetary allocations. He makes sure as well that firefighters are actually paid. The money is there to deal with these fire trucks that we know are pretty expensive because this one in particular was actually custom built for the Jamaica Fire Brigade. And I can tell you that these are some of the most expensive vehicles that you will actually find on the road because these are specialized units for special kind of firefighting and rescue situations. The Jamaica Fire Brigade also gives time and effort to the development of the nation through the hosting of yearly community-based programs. We host homework programs in some of the communities that we, we are in. We also have fun days to which the public is invited. And then we go in and we have expos. We're a part of health fairs. We are a part of job expos as well. Careers day, we go into schools. So we make sure that we involve everybody and we are not just giving to them from a firefighting perspective, but we are developing the whole person. This service-oriented institution is committed to saving lives and property by undergoing constant training and employing the use of modern equipment and contemporary techniques and practices in their day-to-day -day activities. We do internal and external assessments. We also make sure that we have a team of well-trained firefighters so the public is generally ensured that whenever you see firefighters of the Jamaica Fire Brigade coming out there, you're getting persons that are trained with the highest quality. And we can boast that when we had the situation in Haiti in 2010, firefighters from the Jamaica Fire Brigade went as a part of the search and rescue effort. The Jamaica Fire Brigade, saving lives, protecting property. For more information on the Jamaica Fire Brigade, visit their website www.jfb.gov.jm or call 922-2523 or 922-0007. The business process outsourcing BPO industry is thriving ground for youth employment. International entities are investing in bright-minded young Jamaicans and the government is providing the environment to nurture that. And don't be fooled, some of the companies coming to Jamaica are world-renowned brands in IT, communications, law and health. So if you're interested, next Friday, Jampro will host a BPO career fair at the University of Technology. You might consider stopping by to get necessary information on the employment opportunities in this growing industry. It is just one of the tools being used by the government to give hope to Jamaica's youth. Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. What Jamaica needs now is greater production. Not just by some, but by everyone. Yes, we must. 
must work hard to keep our country alive. And takes work long in order to survive. What you make the needs now is greater conservation. Not just by some, but by the entire nation. If we use less gasoline and electricity, by Jamaican not just food clothes but even our vacation we'll create more jobs for our people you'll see and make Jamaica a better place for you and me what Jamaica needs now what Jamaica needs now is made of productivity what you make a need now What you make a need now What you make a need now Is our strength and unity That's what you make a need now What you make a need now What you make a need now Is our responsibility That's what you make a need now What you make a need now what you make a need now is made of productivity. That's what you make a need now. What you make a need now. What you make a need now is all the strength and unity. This is where the magazine closes for today. If you need more information on the features aired in today's show, click on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may also find more information on government programs and policies. For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on various social media sites, and you can download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed while you're on the go. I'm Audrey Williams. Have a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.